Believe it or not, on April 1st, David Rutten, who is the founder of Grasshopper, announced on McNeil's forum that Grasshopper 2 version Alpha 1 is open for public testing. A lot of people thought that this was just April Fool's joke, but in fact it is not and this is real. Grasshopper 2 is coming and in this video we're going to cover what we need to know as current Grasshopper 1 users and show some of the new exciting features that are currently implemented and being worked on. Let's take a look. It all started with this post on Rhino Forum where the man himself, David Rutten, the lead developer of Grasshopper, uh, lifted the curtain and shared with the world that Grasshopper 2 version alpha 2 is open for public testing and he invited all of us to take it, uh, download it, take it for a spin and help with providing valuable feedback. I'm sure that you must be having a lot of questions about this newest release of Grasshopper but here is some of the most important information that you need to know. Grasshopper 2 is not a finished product. This is a version that is open for public testing and we still don't have an estimated time when it will be finished. Maybe when Rhino 8 comes out, maybe later, we really don't know because it depends on a lot of factors. A lot of components are still missing, not because they will not exist, but because they haven't been finalized yet. So right now we just need to be patient with the current release. It is also important to note that the code base of Grasshopper 2 was created from scratch in order to facilitate multi-thread processing and include various new mathematical tools and the ability to hold metadata within components, which means that we'll have the ability to attach material properties to shapes, geometries, so the organization of data will be taken to another level. Multi-thread processing means that Grasshopper 2 will be faster, of course, but not in all areas yet because Grasshopper 1 is super optimized at this point after 10 years of continuous development. However, with this complete rewrite of the code, we have certain limitations. One of the biggest limitations is that we won't be able to use existing Grasshopper 1 files. Over time, this may change, but this would be a huge job just to optimize every single Grasshopper 1 component to work flawlessly in Grasshopper 2. Uh, this integration may come at some point, but at the moment it is not a yet a priority. Some simple components like point or a line would work with Grasshopper 2 already, but anything that is more complex would return an error. Another very big issue is that none of Grasshopper 1 plugins will work with Grasshopper 2. For me personally, this is a huge drawback because this would mean that developers of all existing plugins would have to rewrite their own code if they wish to use it in Grasshopper 2 and I doubt that it will happen. Maybe the developers of the most famous plugins will do such a thing, but certainly not all of them. Another very important piece of information is that Grasshopper 1, as we currently know it, is not dead. It will continue to be developed, improved, optimized, and David mentioned that we should continue to use Grasshopper 1 for any kind of production work, so we don't risk any unexpected crashes or bugs. One cool thing here is that both Grasshopper 1 and 2 can be used simultaneously. So we can actually try to play with both of them at the same time. But again, for now, just use Grasshopper 2 for testing purposes and constructive feedback. Now let's take Grasshopper 2 for a spin. Okay, so the installation process is very simple. You just need to go to this URL. This is work in progress Rhino 8. In order to use this version, you need to have a license for Rhino 7. Once you put your email here and download your Rhino, you would open up your Rhino and now the way that you would install uh, Grasshopper 2, you need to go to Package Manager. So you'll just type Package Manager in here. You would need to actually click on Include Pre-releases and here you would type uh, Grasshopper 2. This will give you this option and you would simply choose the latest version from here and you would click on Install. Once you finish that, your Grasshopper is ready to go. Uh, the way that you would activate Grasshopper is by typing underscore G2. This would open up a Grasshopper window and you can see here that a couple of things are different. So now we see that the Grasshopper canvas has a little bit different graphics. You'll see that we have uh, many different uh, functions. Some of them are familiar, some of them are new uh, and they're quite different in terms of the design of the icons. And of course we have all of this uh, things that we had from before, like factors, curve, surface, uh, mesh, transform, and so on. Everything works the same way in terms of uh, applying the uh, the commands. You would just simply drag and drop them, or you can actually just type here, for example, move, and I'll be able to select 
the the icon. One thing that uh, you can notice is that, for example, let me uh, grab some of these uh, elements, for example, circle. You'll see here that when I zoom in, these icons are actually not gonna break. They're uh, vector icons, which means that as much as I zoom out, you will see that the icons will still uh, still work. See here, you have this percentage of the scale, and now you can simply see the vector icons. So you don't see the details, but when you zoom out, if your definition is quite big, you'll be able to see everything else here. So visually, you can see that Grasshopper 2 is quite, quite different. And uh, let me show you if we uh, take something from the, from the perspective. So let's say that we have uh, some sort of a box. I'm going to simply create here a rectangle, and I'm going to extrude this rectangle. And I'm going to reference it now. So now here you don't have B reps. I'm not sure if they will be uh, available later on, but right now you don't have B reps. Instead of B reps, you have uh, surfaces. So you can simply here take the surface. And if you want to reference this uh, surface from a run of viewport, you would right click. And now you see that also the menu is a little bit different. Uh, here on this uh, element, you can actually uh, select that surface. So I would click plus it would say pick a surface to reference. I would click here. And now you can see how uh, this is uh, visually shown in my uh, viewport. And now here we can also, you know, whatever we do with this, it's gonna, it's gonna change as well. And you'll be able to see uh, here when you right click if it's enabled, if it's disabled, if it's visible or hidden. And we have also modifiers. Before we had this kind of like in front, you, you could put like graft and, and uh, flatten and so on. And now they're called modifiers and you can actually select them from here. You have simplify, uh, you have a graft as we had before. We have some new one, which is renumber and more, uh, of, of more of them. So I'm not gonna go into all of the, the details here. I just want to show you like the overall look and feel. And uh, if you want, you can also you know change the name. You can say my box so on and you will you'll, you'll see the name here one thing here that is very important is uh, the way that the wires are working now they're quite quite different so for example let's say you want to move this box uh, you would put this in the geometry here is the shape so we would click here and now we need to choose the vector here so let's choose let's type X here it is world X and here we need to put the slider so I'm going to type slider. Sliders are also very like uh, interesting. They're new, like have the ability to choose different kind of displaying options like this, this or that. And you can also pick here exactly the numbers. So I can go from, let's say, uh, let's say you want integer numbers. You can go from zero to, let's say 10. And here I would put this in the vector. So now if you want to modify the move, the movement, you would simply increase the number slider and you'll see how this is this is modifying this is changing and with this uh, you can also of course modify this you can bring it uh, to a higher value and you would have better um, luck okay so now we have a small definition and i wanted to share with you uh, the new feature uh, which is connected with the selection of the wires so here you can click on any single wire and you can see how uh, they're going to be uh, selected and on top of that you can select both of them like this. You can also select the wires and the component and you can break them up. So you can simply click on them, you can delete them and now uh, the connection will break. Once you break, break the connection, you can of course go Control Z and bring it back. And when you select it from left to right, uh, it's gonna just uh, take what is actually inside of the selection window. So it will not take these guys only if you do it from the right side. Here it is. You may notice that here we have some sort of like uh, like handles here on the edges. So this just gives us the sense of where our uh, geometry is. And we also have these new options here, like uh, preview modes. So here you, will, you can turn off the preview if you don't want to see anything that is on the grasshopper window. Uh, you can also turn on the, the preview wires, which means that uh, these wires will be uh, invisible if you turn this on. And also the last one is preview meshes, which is allowing you to see some kind of like a ghosted, ghosted mode. One very cool feature that I would want to show you here is the dark mode. If you click here on view dark mode, it will change the whole canvas into a uh, black, uh, black uh, dark mode. And you'll see how uh, we have different type of uh, presentation and colors here. Uh, you can actually control these colors if you go here into preview settings. 
and this will give you the ability to kind of modify the preview. So here, uh, if you click on dark, these are all of the dark uh, colors, right? But if you if you change this to, let's say, uh, Grasshopper 1, you will see that we're going to have the same uh, look and feel of the geometry as we had in Grasshopper 1. So if, you, if you're used to that, you can actually use that previous styling, but you can also uh, take some of these new ones or you can even make your own if you wish. The last thing that I want to share with you is the connection with Grasshopper 1. So you may notice that we don't have like some of these co commands are still not available for Grasshopper 2, but you can actually run Grasshopper 1 with Grasshopper 2. So let me uh, put a new document here and you will see here that now you have both Grasshopper 1 and Grasshopper 2 open sim simultaneously. So if you have some of the commands that are not available here, you can actually use them from uh, from the Grasshopper 1. It doesn't mean that they will work exactly as they work in Grasshopper 1, but you can, you know, try and can see uh, what types of, of things you can get. And the way that you would do this, you simply need to, for example, uh, let's say B-Wrap Edges, you would simply drag and drop it on, on this uh, canvas here. But of course, uh, I'm not sure if it will work because, let's see, yeah, it actually has. So here you can see the edges, you can see the, uh, the interior and non unmindful edges. So in this case, this would work. If you want to pick something, we would type here item from index and here we'll take the list. This is the list. So here I'm going to put a slider and I'm going to say one. And here you will see that I just selected, I just selected this edge. So we used uh, B-Rep edges from Grasshopper 1 and Grasshopper 2. If you type here B-Rep edges, you will see that it actually doesn't uh, doesn't exist. So uh, this is just uh, the workaround that you can use for now. Uh, this doesn't work in all, all of these situations, but for example, in this case, uh, the compatibility is there. I hope you enjoyed this short presentation of Grasshopper 2 Alpha 1. I would highly encourage you to test it out and report any bugs on Rhino Forum so we can all benefit later on from the official uh, public release of Grasshopper 2. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about this new Grasshopper release and post any questions that you might have. Cheers, guys.